Hi, my name is Jared Begley, and today I'm going to be doing a video, pres video presentation on the Hakobo Arbenz of Guatemala. Um, right here, you can see there's three pictures of him. Um, you've got the first one in his tuxedo, the second one in his um, uniform for the military, and the third one as he's addressing a speech uh, to a crowd. Just a little background information on Hakobo or Ben's using it. Um, he was president of Guatemala from 1951 to 1954 and minister of national defense from 1945 to 1951. Um, he came into office after Jose Arvalo. Um, and when he came into office, he enacted land reforms to redistribute idle lands that the UFCO, or United Fruit Company, had 85% of their acreage unused. Um, and he took this land and redistributed it so the people could benefit from this. And I believe it was 500,000 people benefited from this. So he became a popular leader for his own people. Um, but for other people, like the OAS, um, they claimed Hakobo had communist ties, like uh, in Russia and China. And due to this claim of communist ties, um, the U.S. didn't want the domino effect to spread throughout the Central Americas or Latin America. And that resulted in President Eisenhower wanting to undo the elected president that Arbenz had won. And so President Eisenhower actually had the CIA try and oust Arbenz, which they eventually did in 1954. Um, so the sources today that I'm going to be comparing, uh, the first one's going to be depending in, Dependency and Intervention, the case of Guatemala in 1954 by Jose M. Ibar de Soto. Second, Secret, Secret History, the CIA's classified account of its operations in Guatemala in 1952 to 1954 by Nick Culther. And the last one's going to be Bitter Fruit, the story of American coup in Guatemala by Stephen C. Schlesinger and Stephen Kinzer. Starting off with the secret history, the CIA's classified account of its operations. Um, about, the, about this book, Coulter um, was hired by the CIA to write this book, and it was originally written for the CIA, not as a history book or a historical book, and it was, it was written during its short-lived post-Cold War because it had used many of the agency's closed files that not the everyday public has access to. Um, and as mentioned, it, the book did have official declassified accounts of what the, the role and operations of the CIA uh, had in Guatemala, such as designing, planning, and executing the overthrow of President Jacobo Arbenz and his government. But due to the declassified files, uh, Coulter had to readjust his book because he couldn't just publish those declassified files. And uh, Coulter actually also notes that the invasion of Guatemala was one of the best studied covert operations that the CIA documents provided um, had answers to. And so all those blanks that were missing were actually answered by the declassified documents that people didn't have access to. Um, Coulter also argues that much of what the CIA had done actually led towards a fiasco in Guatemala in which the United States and its allies um, were rescued by factors they had no control over, which shows that it actually was heading towards a fiasco if they couldn't control where they were going. Um, Coulter also indicates... Um, he leaves indications in the text um, that the audience has to guess like what is missing to understand which like the answers that remain hidden. That goes back to the declassified files. Not many people know much about it. And uh, also in the book, Coulter showed that RBNs and his policies interfered with what the United States and the United Fruit Company wanted, and so that forced them to intervene. Um, and that's also due to that domino effect we just, we discussed earlier. 
Now, on the second book, Dependency and Intervention, The Case of Guatemala in 1954 by Jose M. Ibar de Soto, uh, the thing about this book is it's based completely on secondary sources, and it's a case study of Guatemala in the final year of President Arbenz and how his like land reforms had affected Guatemala in whole. Um, now, the, although the narration of this case study does provide a description of the Guatemalan revolutionary viewpoints. Um, this book's actually in favor of the agrarian reforms that Jacobo had put in place, and it's complete. It's clearly a pro Arbenz book, which is actually really hard to find, considering almost everybody was wanting to keep like keep that domino effect contained. Um, it also showed that policies and issues when it came to the fruit exports and growing fruit and how the agrarian reforms were important to Hockabo and how he would get his co um, country to not only grow but benefit from these reforms. Finally, the bitter fruit, the story of the American coup in Guatemala, um, both Schlesinger and Kinzer, um, they maintain their original position um, of Arben's ideology, that his ideology was nationalism and that the accusations that Arben's was a communist dupe were far-fetched. Um, that's quoting from page 60 to 61 um, in the book. Um, also in this book, it's got first or primary accounts, uh, like interviews with Arben's widow, Jose Manuel Fortuny, and other communist leaders. Um, also, it interviews uh, Lasius, um, who was mentioned in Coulter's book. He wrote the afterword for that. He concluded that uh, although Arbenz did not join the Guatemalan Communist Party until 1957, the last two years he was uh, in presidency or in his administration, he declared himself a communist. Um, and according to Arbenz, to reach that state and other Latin America communists believe that Guatemala, they had to pass through this capitalist stage, and that was the inevitable, inevitable evolution towards socialism. Um, and that's that leads to the agrarian reforms that uh, Hakobo wanted er, and did enforce which was designed to make Guatemala a modern capitalist state, but that didn't make Arbenz a capitalist. His long-term goal was actually the creation of communist state in Guatemala, and that actually led to what the United States feared, and that was the um, domino effect that if Guatemala was communist, it would just trickle down. Also in The Bitter Fruit, uh, it references the CIA-orchestrated counter-revolutionary movement on behalf of the United Fruit Company, um, as mentioned in Nick Coulter's Secret History. Um, but the thing about this book is it doesn't actually reference the actual book from Nick Coulter or other sources. Um, and due to this, it can lead to misinformation and inaccuracy because it doesn't reference those and it doesn't show where the authors got their sources. But to give you a little bit of how Arbenz actually, how the end of Arbenz came around, um, Arbenz was actually exiled after his, after the coup in 1954, and he went through several countries uh, due to exile. Um, due to this exile and how he traveled almost through Latin and Central America. Um, it led to his family just falling apart. Um, it actually caused his daughter to commit suicide, which led Hakobo to alcoholism while he was in Mexico. And due to this alcoholism, it actually led to his death in 1971. But in October of 2011, the Guatemalan government issued an official apology for Arben's overthrow um, I find that pretty fascinating that they apologize for overthrowing him when he was clearly a dictator. Um, now, I did reference some other sources in 
in my power PowerPoint. A few of the articles I do recommend are the Bowen U.S. Foreign Policy Towards Radical Change Covert Operations in Guatemala, 1950 to 1954. Um, that was one of the more interesting ones that I read. Uh, another one was Halasius, uh, as mentioned in the two in two of the previous books, the Agrarian Reform of Jacobo Arbenz. That was published in the Journal of Latin American Studies, which is a really fascinating one to read, considering he's been involved in a lot of the sources on Jacobo Arbenz. And the final one that I I would truly recommend would be the arc, or the Turner Berry source, uh, Guatemala. Republica de Guatemala, or Republic of Guatemala. I hope you all have learned something today, and thank you very much.